Okay, quick introduction what we're doing here. I actually do have a Blue Eddy that was loaned to me recently, well, a couple of years ago, I guess now, but I don't typically use it. But my thought is, could I use other things that I have and do basically the same thing as having a solar generator? So this video is part of a collection of videos that I'm going to make. Uh, in this case, we're using Harbor Freight tool batteries and an inverter and a couple other parts to do the same thing that a solar generator would do. In the other video, we're going to use an electric bike battery and an inverter to do the same kind of thing. My reasoning is a lot of people have electric tools already. So if the power goes off, would it be practical to grab some of your cordless tool batteries and use them to run some important load that you had or at least charge your phones? The other part of it is the electric bike. If it's um, if you're only out of power for a couple days, that battery could get a couple things done or at least run your laptop and your phone or something like that. So that's the idea. What we're looking at now is uh, kind of a block diagram of what it takes to make this work. I'm not going into too many specifics on this video because everybody's tool batteries are different voltages. But it'll give you a starting point at least. Uh, so many people are buying solar generators now that the cost is coming down and the ones I've looked at recently are much better in a lot of respects. So it may not be worth your trouble, but it's something to at least consider. All right, enjoy the video. What we're doing here is I'm powering basically everything on my desk that's turned on is coming from these uh, e-bike batteries. Normally they'd have a plastic case around them. These I got for free because my friend Ryan, who I met on the Sun Trip race in California uh, this year, 2022, uh, I was having trouble with the batteries I had and so they got ahead of me, the rest of the group, and they found a bike shop that had rental bikes and so Ryan goes in there because he also has a bike shop and is a bike mechanic and he gets to talking to the guys and first they were going to get a used battery and then they, the other guy was like, well what about those ones in the back and they, they walked out of the bike shop with eight batteries that did not work for free. Okay, I ended up getting four of them. And uh, before they give it to me, they spent the next night in the campsite figuring out what was wrong with them. And Ryan was like, oh, usually it's a blown fuse or something, but the guys that are on the rental side don't take the time to figure it out. They just put them back on the shelf. So they took a couple apart, got them working, charged them up. So the next morning they give me these two batteries, which was like night and day different from what I had. So I carried all of the old batteries plus these plus the other two all the way back from California on the bike and then when I got back I had time to take them apart and figure them out and and go like that so instead of putting them back in the cases because the cases were damaged I just wrapped them up with Gorilla Tape okay so that's that's that story so part of doing that is I rewired them and just put uh, these are Anderson power pole connectors uh, it's a good heavy-duty connector. It's a nice positive locking, so I've got a bunch of stuff that uses them. Also, a lot of the uh, kind of the DIY bike industry is doing Anderson, so this was uh, a connector that came with a charger. I also got this charger from from Ryan. It's a cycle satiator from Grin Cycles up in Canada, up in Canada in Vancouver. If you're looking for a really good charger, let me know. Um, if you're in Canada, just go straight to Grin. If you're not in Canada, Ryan can probably help you get one because otherwise you got to deal with customs going across the border. Um, either way, highly recommended. Um, if you let me know in the comments if you're interested in something like that, I can get you Ryan's information. Um, guess it was kind of like an affiliate thing. Of, I've forget if he was going to pay me money if I sent him any leads or at least give me a discount on the next one. This was used and so he gave me, uh, I had to buy it, but I needed something to charge the batteries with. 
So it's really cool because it's programmable. So for instance, I've got these set up for 53 volts, but I can also set it up to charge uh, a 48 or a 40 or a 36 or whatever. You can go into the settings and just create profiles. Super cool. Can do up to eight amps. Yeah, that's it's a beast. Okay, so what I'm doing, these are connected together and in parallel. So it gives me more runtime using again a screw terminal like I did before. And then it's coming out another Anderson connector. That's going down. I'm using this uh, trailer junction box. Uh, this setup was actually on the bicycle on the trip. So I had uh, this inside has seven terminals, which you would use for hooking up your trailer lights and stuff on your, your if you had a truck pulling a trailer. Um, not a commercial trailer, although they have something similar, I guess. Now that I think about it, anyway, so let's like you know you can hook up your brake lights and your reverse lights and your turn signals and your marker lights all inside of here. Nice waterproof box, so I figured that was a good thing to use. So what I'm doing is I got the the battery voltage coming down from here. It goes into this box, and that's just an easy way to make a connection. It goes to this thing which is similar to the one in the other video but this one is made to work with 36 or 48 it can do either one and it outputs 12 volts from here it's going back into the box and I've got so I've got two terminals for 36 or 48 I labeled it all 36 but it's running 48 right now so I got two terminals for the battery voltage and then two more terminals that are the 12 volt for positive and negative so that is coming out after it goes through the down converter, it comes out and it goes to here, which is running my cigarette lighter. Same setup I had in the other one. In fact, this is the same parts. I just was moving the parts back and forth to the inverter. And there's the inverter. And this is putting power into a plug-in or a, a power strip that's powering all of this stuff. Uh, this is, I'm running the Raspberry Pi, which uses like 25 watts including the the 24 inch monitor and I got this light going and I'm testing some stuff here plus I got the Wii boost up there where's it right up there that's giving me some cell phone signal I got two phones over here that are charging okay so I'm running a bunch of stuff but none of it uses very much power I've been doing this for four hours today and I still got 49 volts on this 53 volt battery yeah, I could I can literally run a lightweight computer like the Raspberry Pi. It doesn't use very much power, but I can run that all day on less power than it takes me to take the e-bike into town. All right, so it's like, okay, by not running the heavy-duty computer, I can run longer. Like if I ran right down here, there's a computer. That thing pulls about 400 watts, right? compared to 25 watts so it makes a huge difference so if I'm just screwing around on the internet or something like that I do as much as I can with the Raspberry Pi this is the Pi here in a 3d printed case also I'm shivering sorry it's uh, 49 degrees it's warmed up a little bit I had snow this morning not very much just a little skiff of snow I looked outside I'm like wait what is that that's not right Anywho, so yesterday I cooked the beans using the Harbor Freight batteries. Not well, it was good. It was a good test. I didn't have enough batteries to do it. Uh, today I'm using a similar setup with the the electric bike batteries, and I'm running two of them. That's got more capacity than the Harbor Freight batteries do. And uh, we're doing getting some stuff done. By tomorrow, the sun should be back out. Uh, yesterday, it's like I've got a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery down here, just kind of a deep cycle looking battery. Plus I got these batteries, these are what I had made for the bike trip, and then they didn't really end up working because my connections weren't solid. So that's all tied together, and that's coming off of another solar panel. It's finally up to 13. Normally it would be starting at 13, but I ran it down yesterday, so I'm not even using it. But down here is the inverter that comes from these batteries. So I've got a completely separate inverter that I can run all of my office separate from the rest of the house. So if I'm 
you know, run in the microwave, I don't knock all this stuff off if I run out of power. So it's kind of like just keep it separate. Yeah. Anyway, that's that. That's just kind of like, well, this is, I've been ma messing with this for a couple of weeks. And like I said on the other one, in case I split this up, the idea is if you have an electric bike and if you have the charger for the bike, when you're not riding the bike, this plus a few parts that are not very expensive could become your own little solar generator, just like a Blue Eddy, right? So it's got the same basic idea. You got your battery, you've got some power converters, just basically because you don't want to run 53 volts into your system, uh, a couple connectors, you've got a cigarette lighter, and then you come out through the inverter, and you got power, right? So if you already have this, instead of buying a solar generator that charges you for this again, that's the expensive part. These would be $500 a piece if they were new. You know, they were broken, so we got them for free. You probably won't get lucky like that, but if you already have an e-bike, if it's got a removable battery, you might be able to do something like this. You know, if it's a fancy Bosch bike, it's probably going to be harder to get into the wires. If it's a DIY, if you went on Amazon and bought a kit, this would be a lot easier because you could just, the wire that you hooked up to the bike, you would just disconnect that and you could do this. In fact, you could you could hook up the inverter and the con the charger or the uh, the down converter. You can make a pigtail that you would hook this up to the bike and when you're camping, you could have a way to recharge your laptop or whatever, right? The difference is the little red inverter is good for 300 watts. Okay, so you got to think, is your load going to work on 300 watts? My coffee maker, I think, uses 500 watts, so you'd need a bigger one of those. Um, the big computer would use just more power than what this could handle, so I'd be right on the edge. But the one down here, that's a 2,000 watt inverter. Now, to run that, you need much bigger wires than what we're doing here. You don't run the big one off a cigarette lighter. I'm running wires that are almost like garden hoses, you know. But I could do something like this and feed from here into a bigger wire as long as I don't go over what this wire can do. These are 10-gauge wires. So you'd figure out, okay, how many watts am I pulling or how many amps am I pulling? You know, I got 53 volts, and so that helps. Higher voltage, you can run a smaller wire. But then you would down convert it to 12 volts before you went into the inverter. The last point on that, if you were going to start, like, you know, I've already got half of this stuff. Okay. But if I didn't already have the inverter, you can get a 48 volt inverter, which would then be voltage compatible with the bike battery. Then you wouldn't need the down converter. So you could just run straight, you know, basically 53 volts into a 48, you'd probably be fine, look, you know, make sure, you know, read the instructions, see if it can handle, what's the maximum voltage it can handle, it might be too much. But if you could do that, you could run straight into that, skip half of this gaggle here, and then come out, you'd have AC power, and then you could plug all your appliances into that, and you'd be set. Then it's just a matter of how much runtime, and this is like the part with the Harbor Freight batteries, I went through six batteries and I still hadn't finished cooking the beans. Okay, so you, it's like, well, you need more. Okay, now if you have solar also, like on this setup, this piece right here, this last one, if I hooked a solar panel to that, that can recharge the bike battery. So if I got kind of a cloudy day, it wouldn't work very good, but if I had a sunny day, I could have solar coming in topping off the batteries as they're going out and then it's a matter of if you can balance it enough if you got as much solar coming in as what's going out the battery will never go dead or you could say if this was good for four hours if you added a little bit of solar maybe you could get six hours out of it so you take four hours worth of power from the battery a little bit from the sun every hour would extend your life a little bit okay that's it yeah easy and in the meantime, just hope the sun comes back out. Oh, that's a good look right there, I tell you what. Got got my 
Yeah, I got my whole collection going here. Got my military color, but not military jacket. Military sweater. Watch cap, military style. But the, the hoodie itself is from when I worked at the post office. That covers just about everything. Could almost be a Coast Guard with that. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching the video, and uh, stay tuned for more. And uh, pray for sun. That's it. Bye for now.